up guys? Let's talk about E85. So what is E85? Well, E85 is an ethanol-based fuel, and they call it E85 because it has a content level of about 85% ethanol. Now, the stoichiometric value of this, meaning how much fuel needs to be in the combustion chamber for it to be a stoic or a perfect air-fuel ratio, is drastically increased with E85 versus 91. Another question we get a lot about E85 is going to be, if you guys enable full-time closed loop, that's the claim to fame, how come I can't just put E85 in the gas tank and it runs just fine? Because it should be adjusting for that, right? Well, that's not exactly how it works. We have a, a limitation to the adaptation. It's about 30%. And E85 is gonna be a little bit beyond that 30%. It has to be two tunes for those separate fuels, but it's a very easy process once you get rid of most of the gas in the tank or you're out of gas in the tank and you fill up with E85 or 91. You can swap tunes in a matter of a minute, basically. People use E85 because it's 110 octane, loves compression, loves cylinder pressure, loves turbos, everything. It, it's an amazing fuel, and a lot of people that race their cars, their bikes, they use E85. It also costs half of what pump gas costs. So I know you're probably sitting there thinking, what's the drawback? Why would I not use E85, right? First, you gotta reduce a third of your range for E85 because we're dealing with about 40% more fuel that we have to deliver to the bike to be a perfect air fuel ratio. Not every bike is also set up for E85. The older S1000s, for example, what they did was on the 10 through 19s, we had to swap the pump out for E85. Whereas this new one, we don't need a pump, we don't need anything. We really just need software and that's it. And you're probably thinking, that's not really a big drawback either, right? Well, also a lot of bikes aren't geared towards E85. Here's the issue, main issue with E85, it's consistency. Now the ethanol, which is the percentage here we're talking about that needs to be high, it ranges anywhere from 50 to 85%, depending on the pump you go. And depending on that consistency in the fuel will depend on how your bike needs to be tuned. This is why we enable it, because we have control of full-time closed loop on the BMWs, but we won't offer for something like a Yamaha R1 or a CBR. It may work out very good on it, but we have to tune it tank to tank if we were gonna use those motorcycles, which is not feasible. No one's gonna tune their bike for every single tank of fuel. It's just not a, it's not a reliable content of fuel. That's why we only use it on full-time closed loop bikes. That's for safety purposes only. I know a lot of tuners offer it for like the R1 or for the CBR, but that is a guessing game and it's not one we're gonna play. So that's why a lot of the times when we tune bikes on E85, they have to have wide band capability like we see on the BMW, for example, where it has the two wide bands in front and the two narrow bands in the back has four exhaust sensors to monitor everything. And we, through our tuning, can enable full-time closed loop, meaning it's always checking the exhaust and seeing what the air fuel ratio is and changing based on that. E85 is also gonna provide you a more snappy throttle. It's also gonna give you power across the entire range. You're gonna get three or four more horsepower. Now I did a dyno on this thing. And you can see the graph we put up here, it looks about the same right here and there, but because we changed the gearing to a 44 tooth, it's not lining up perfectly on the dyno. So I made my own graph. Now that it's lined up, you can see that E5 is making three to four more horsepower across the entire rev range. As far as the drawbacks of E5, I heard people say that E5 will go bad in your bike and blah, blah, blah. Well, E5 is something that stock vehicles use. GM uses it, for example, flex fuel. You can just put E5 in that or 91. It really just depends on how well it's tuned. And ours has a perfect cold start. Cold start with the E85. I've been testing it for a couple thousand miles now. It's been working great, honestly, on the bike. But it does require proper tuning. And that's why I suggest going with BT Moto and having dedicated E85 tune. It's really easy. You can bring the handheld with you to the gas station. You get really low on gas. As long as there's only a little bit of fuel left for that pump gas, and you fill it up with E85, you can swap the tunes out. It will be rough to start it a couple times because you're dealing with getting the E85 in the lines and getting the, the pump gas out of the lines. But once you get it going, it's perfectly fine. I heard 
heard people say about E85 is it goes bad in the tank and it's gonna gum up everything. That's not true. If you're really worried about that, you can pickle your fuel system. What that means is drain all the E5 out of it once every couple months, put pump gas into it, put that tune back into it, run an entire tank and pump gas through it, then drain it again, put the E5 in it, you're good to go. You can do it once every couple months, you're not gonna deal with any gumming issues or anything like that. And the only time I've ever seen any kind of gumming is bad quality E5, like horrible quality, where it's been sitting there for nine months plus. I mean, I've had E5 sitting in a bike for three months without starting it, it was perfectly fine. The E5 tuning on the BMW requires that you at least have stage one on your motorcycle, so we can do some E5 on it. And then we'll send you the file, just like we did the first file. You load it to your handheld and you can swap files when you're going from pump gas to E85 or vice versa. <laughs> Guys, a quick pull here. Oh my god! She's quick. She is quick. So really, the only shortfall with 85 is going to be less range, and that's it. That you got to swap tunes between 91 and 85 to make it work properly. That's really the only drawback. The benefits: three to four more horsepower in torque across the entire RPM range, a better throttle feel, more punchy, the cooling effect that it has on the engine, and the nice sweet smell. It smells like a brewery coming out of the back of this bike right now. It's like a sweet kind of alcohol smell because it's using that corn. But if you're in an area that has quite a few E85 stations, or you have your own source for E85, it's an amazing option for your bike. So I hope this video helped you guys with some of the questions you have about E85 or moving to E85. And it's just super easy to deal with on this bike. All the Gen 4, the 2020 Plus uh, BMW S1000 RR, the single R, the XR, even the R1300, R1250. We have E85 on all those bikes available. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.